Okay guys, so in this video we are going to look at, well, unread messages and seeing unread messages. So let's have a look and here we have the actual like our application and you can see that I've added this little indicator here saying that hey, they, uh, there are new messages to be read in general. And if I go over to my other client here and I just type some stuff in, who, bar, etc, etc, we can see that this number is actually incremented. If I switch over and I actually go into this, you'll see that, hey, it actually disappears. But I can also go down here and I can kind of start typing things in here and all of a sudden, hey, I have a new message down here and I can go and look at that as well. So that's basically the feature in of itself. So let's look at some code. So first and foremost, the current user view has now been updated so that we actually have a reference where we, we're going to extract out the unread messages, which is a new thing that I call basically just a new map that we've added to our model. And it's just going to be a map of numbers because we don't actually need to restore a reference to an ID or anything like that. We just need a number that indicates how many new unread messages we have for each user because each user is going to have unread messages that are unique to them, right? And then we have this little function here, set unread messages, and all it's going to do is it's going to take the user ID, the channel ID, and unread messages, which is just going to be a number. And we're going to get the user that is associated with the user ID, and set the channel ID, and set the unread messages that are part of that channel. And that's about it, really. And then we're going to save the user. And, well, yeah, I had a little bit of a bug here. I saw that. I hadn't taken care of in a previous story or a previous video, so I've just kind of fixed that so that this was actually it actually works. Anywho, and then on the client side, which is this is the client side model, we just added the unread messages, so easy peasy, like just extracting that out. And then in our client side routes, what we've done now is that basically whenever we change between the different channels, what we're going to do is that we are going to set the unread messages. We have a function where we're basically just going to make a network call. And we're going to set the channel ID, like the unread messages, to zero. That's all we're going to do. And then we're going to get the user back. We're going to wrap that in a user model. And then we're going to dispatch set user so that we can actually update that you know we've seen the messages basically. If we look at the sockets, we have a few a few changes here. So we see now that all right. So when we actually receive a message, we're going to do a little bit of a different thing than we do, well, a little bit more than we've done so far. So basically, we're still going to check if the, it is you know if we are in the selected channel or not. But if we're not, and then that's the kind of the key, the key point here, because we don't want to set the message to be like, we don't have to create an unread message if we're actually receiving messages in the channel that we already all are a part of. But um, if we are not a part of this channel, we are going to go and grab the unread messages object or like the unread messages from the current user, like the user that we have. We're going to grab those numbers and then we're going to just check if we actually have unread messages for this specific instance, like for this channel, if, or if it's a completely fresh channel. And then we're going to set, if, like if we don't have any unread messages or like the value is undefined, we're going to set them to one because hey, now that there's a message that came in that is associated with this channel and we're not part of that channel, we're going to set that indicated one. And otherwise we're simply going to increment the, like the unread messages that we have stored on our user model by one and set that. And that's about it. And then everything else is the same as you saw earlier. And we can see that I added like just the message model here has just been updated on the client side with just including the user ID as well, because I actually needed to extract that as well. And here is a little bit of like just small CSS updates. Here's the part that's probably changed the most, which is like the channel list itself. So we are probably going to have to take a little bit of a closer look on this one. So basically, we now need to subscribe on different events. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to check if we have, well, the set user event has fired, basically. And then we're simply going to extract the count, like the amount of unread messages we have for this specific channel ID. And then we're going to check hey, if it's more than 99 or like it's 99 plus. We're going to set the text content to 99 plus instead of because we want to cap it somewhere. We don't want this number to just be infinitely large, right? And otherwise, we're simply going to set the count. And then we're going to check if the count is greater than zero. Then we are going to 
update AR, well, this little unread messages ref, we can actually look at that here in the diff because it's probably more clear. So basically we see here that we've changed the HTML structure a little bit and added this spam down here that is just going to hold the actual count, which is that little red button, the, the red box you saw earlier with the number inside of it. And basically we're just going to have this to be either inline or we're going to show it or we're going to you know hide it depending on what, what the count is. And then we've added a lifecycle event which is just going to when the component itself is actually created it's just going to grab the count and then if there is no count or it's a false value basically so zero or something like that it's going to just hide this element and otherwise everything's hopefully seems pretty straightforward and direct messages is quite literally the exact same code and i'll copy pasted this basically we could probably have moved this into a like a separate component and like reused some of this code but since it's just two different components the Maya rule of three doesn't really apply here. So it's, you know, if we needed to do this for more stuff, then we would probably do so. But not right now. I mean, it is literally the same code and it's not that much of a hassle to copy paste this. If I had a third component or something like that, I saw that I had a pattern to these things, then I would have moved it into like a, a some type of a higher level class or something, a higher class. A super class if you will and then we have our network request here set unread messages which is what we saw earlier nothing super advanced here it's just a put with that value and if we look at channel routes we have as you can expect a, just a route handler now that extracts out the values that we need feed them to our service set on unread messages as you can see and then we simply return the a view representation of our user and that is the entire feature easy peasy so let's move that to ready for test and then we are now going to have a look at searching for well searching for stuff basically